space, the final frontier. Creating stars, galaxy, and nebula require a unique set of techniques. And in this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at a slew of different effects, ultimately creating a being made of the stars themselves. Like Nebula, we're going to be keeping everything very loose and freeform. It's all about going with the flow. We're going to be doing a whole lot of playing with different layer modes and experimenting with the flow of shadows and light, seeing what shapes naturally form as we go. I will be using a graphics tablet today, however, it is by no means required. Just be sure to keep that brush flow rate nice and low, and you'll be just fine. So let's jump right into it. We want to start everything off by trading a star field, which there are tons of different ways to go about. Today, I want to show you all the noise filter technique, which is my personal favorite as it's quick yet effective. You want to go ahead and create a color fill layer, setting it to whatever color you want your sky to be. I'll be using a very dark blue, but you can play with reds, greens, don't feel obligated to choose black or dark blues or your typical sky colors. Space is mysterious after all. You'll want to create a new layer that is filled with straight black, setting it to screen. This will effectively hide it. Go ahead and fill that black layer with 50% noise, making sure the noise is set to Gaussian and monochromatic. Go in with some curve adjusting to further refine and brighten if needed. Just play with the settings until you are happy. This isn't an exact science. You just zoom in so you can kind of get a good look at the density and brightness of your stars. If you want larger stars speckled about, you can either A, paint them in by hand using just a hard round brush, or duplicate your star field, enlarge it, and then go back in with some more level adjustments if needed. And there you go, a quick and easy star field. Next up, you would likely paint any nebula. Um, however, unlike with the stars, I sadly do not have a set method on how I paint nebula and galaxies and space backgrounds to share with everyone but I do have some tips that I typically go by. First, use fractal and cloud brushes alongside of the soft round brush. This will give you more shape and detail and texture. Second, use a mixture of color dodge, linear dodge, screen, and overlay. Three, go layer happy. There's no such thing as too many layers. Sometimes I will draw a single line on a layer and then create a new one. No one's gonna yell at you for having too many layers. You can always merge them down later if you need to. And finally, look at references. Space and nebula art is some of the most popular art on the internet, and for good reason. Take a look at what's out there. You will be incredibly inspired, and you'll be able to see how detailed nebulas and space art can actually become. I will be using a pre-painted space-inspired texture of mine, that I have available for anyone and everyone to download for free. The link will be in the description. It makes a great base to build on. Here, I went ahead and increased the brightness, added some color and contrast here and there, as well as use a couple of adjustment layers. Feel free to use it anywhere, anytime for anything. Next up, we have our color grade. Um, I went ahead and set up my color grade for the image, comprising of a whopping eight adjustment layers in total. And between you and me, I could easily add more. I'm just going to do a quick rundown of all of them, or else we will be here all night, if not all year. So, first up, a curves layer. Not only to adjust the contrast, but to increase the reds, greens, and blues. Second, a color lookup layer, set to crisp warm. Another color lookup layer, set to fall colors, focused on the left side of the image using layer masks. Finishing up the color lookup layers, I have one last one set to sunset. And here I have a whopping four selective color layers, adjusting the blues, reds, magentas, and cyans in that order. 
I prefer to set each color on their own selective color layer to give me even more control over the overall adjustments. I could set these to individual color modes, I could adjust the opacity, and the order of the selective color layers actually matter. If you move them around, you will get slightly different effects, so keep that in mind. Um, you'll also want to go ahead and group and lock all these layers together, keeping things nice and tidy. With our base being done, we can move on to the main event. We're going to be using a lot of layer masks, group within group, layer masks on those groups. Let's just say I highly recommend keeping things organized this round because it can be a little confusing. Before we worry about all that, first, let's go ahead and extract our model. My personal favorite method is the pen tool. However, any technique works. Once you have your subject all extracted, you'll want to up the contrast of the subject and change the skin tone to a bluish hue, which I did with a hue and saturation layer um, set to colorize. Group all these layers together into a group named face as this will ultimately only end up being the subject's face. However, for now, we are going to go ahead and hide it. Because first, we have to create the base of our body, of our subject, before we can move ahead with that face. Go ahead and duplicate the model layer, bringing it outside of the face group. Right-click Apply Layer Mask if you have a layer mask, and rename the layer to Shadow Body setting it to around 60% opacity. Fill the layer with flat black. I personally like going to image adjustments, hue saturation, and then bringing that brightness down to zero. Then go and add a layer mask to the shadow body layer, masking out the feet and part of the midsection. This is to give this almost a ghost effect, um, a shadow ghost effect, if that makes sense. Trust me, just, just follow me with this one. We can finally add a face to our base. Turn the face group back on, and then using a layer mask filled with black, mask back in parts of the face and neck. Whatever parts you want to mask in is up to you. I chose the left eye and a bit of the neck. But again, this is your design. This is your nebula monster. All up to you. And then by repeating the same steps as we did with the face, we can add some muscle and body detail. This essentially is duplicating your face group, redoing the layer masks so you can only see the body. And then you'll also want to go in and change the model layer to screen and reverse the clip gradient map. So it went from uh, black to white to white to black. This technique is one of my favorites to use if I want someone to look like they're glowing from the outside and it is very handy. Now we want to add a bunch of lighting, detail, and texture effects to our subject. And the best way to go about this is by creating multiple different groups that are masked the shape of our model. That way, anything we drop into that group will be in the shape of our subject. Um, so we don't have to keep masking things over and over and over again. I suggest also making multiple different groups for the sake of organization. Go ahead and create a new group above your previous groups, naming the first group textures. Uh, create a selection in the shape of your model by going to the shadow body layer, holding control, and clicking on the layer's layer icon. Once you have your selection, go back to the textures group and add a layer mask. And there you go, the mask will take the shape of the model. As you may have guessed by the name, this group is dedicated to all of the textures that we want to place um, onto and into our galaxy friend. You will want to use an array of different space and star textures, including reusing our background texture, setting them to different layer modes, screen, lighten, color dodge are some of my favorites, and also utilizing things like layer masks to mask out any harsh edges and unwanted stars, uh, layer opacity and image adjustments, also very handy. I personally love brightness and contrast and um, hue and saturation. You just wanna go nuts and play. There are no wrong answers here. There is no one way to do any of this. Once you are decently happy with your textures, 
create a new group, much as you did with the textures group um, with the layer mask, only naming this one Atmosphere. This is where we're going to add blooms of colored light to our subject, along with building up the already existing shadows. It's all about those screen and color dodge layers with this one. And to get a very nice flowing light effect, I actually use the Perlin Flow Field Brush Set found on Envato Elements. And then finishing up the subject, I decided to add some veins, starting from the left side of the chest spreading out. Once again, using the layer masked group technique to keep everything contained. I'm going to paint jagged one to two pixel lines, making sure they look very organic and random. Once you are done painting and tweaking all of your layers, adding this and adjusting that, go ahead and group all five layers and the shadow base layer into one big group. Uh, so they don't get in the way, as I assume they are all quite beefy. By now, I actually started to notice that the dark area behind the subject's head was looking like a slightly sassy hair flip. So I decided to roll with it. Remember, work with lighting, not against it. If you start to see shapes and detail naturally forming within the lighting and shadows, then enhance them, bring them out use these uh, you know naturally occurring forms to your advantage go in on a layer set to soft light and slowly build up the shadows and lighting using black and white or other colors color picked from around the areas you are enhancing and painting on Along with the hair, I'm feeling like the face also needs some brightening. And frankly, what nameless galaxy being is going to have a set of glowing orange eyes? For eyes and full-bodied subjects, I like to keep it simple. A white circle and some glow using screen and overlay. Smoke brushes are also very, very fun to play with here as it adds a little more texture and a little more movement. And with our star attraction all finished, now is the time to add in the finishing touches. Stars, dust, color, more stars. Can you ever have enough stars? Depends who you ask, and if you ask me, I say no. So go ahead and again, play with the same textures you use to build up your galaxy friend. Only this time, placing them outside of the subject's body, um, making his innards outwards if that isn't too creepy enlarge them blur them shrink them mask them play with every layer mode known to man and alien alike and once you have your textures and your composition in check add your final wash of color to really bring everything together uh, layers of oranges blues and greens set to layer modes like screen overlay color dodge Paint with large brushes, small brushes, cloud brushes are again a great time to play with um, these cloud brushes to add more texture. The one real tip I have is to keep your brush flow low, sometimes as low as 1%. Um, don't be in a big rush here. This will help you control the amount of color being placed as well as the blending of the colors together so you don't have these obnoxiously bright uh, solid plumes of light. Everything is very in harmony with each other. And really, there you have it. Some quick inspired space techniques you can apply to your future works. And remember, these are uh, just the jumping off point. Space is limitless after all. And with that, I'm Abby Esparza. And as always, if you are looking to learn more, why not check out some of the other fantastic tutorials Envato Tuts Plus has to offer. See you next time.